Hi, I'm Patu from Free Fincal. In many households, either the husband or the wife is the primary money manager or uh, the person interested in personal finance and handles all kinds of investments, day-to-day -day expenses, online transactions and so on. The other partner um, is typically not interested in this. They trust the spouse and uh, uh, let them take care of it. Even if uh, the, the active person wants to teach this uh, to them, they are not interested. So in such a situation, what should we do? So let's talk about that in this video. Of course, there are, there are some households where both partners uh, are aware of what's happening uh, with respect to the investments, how the money is being spent, how the uh, you know how to uh, do online transactions where how to do banking etc both partners are aware of it um, in some uh, I would say in many cases uh, one partner is educated enough to understand this quickly but is just not interested so that's the uh, case that I want to uh, talk about so in that case I mean, I mean if they are not interested there's no point trying to force them to you know learn this uh, it just doesn't work i can tell you from personal experience it doesn't work so we must create a system in which if we are not present uh, when i say that that doesn't always mean a negative connotation even for positive reasons see suddenly we may get a promotion uh, and or suddenly we may get too many projects in our job that we become too busy and uh, we may not be able to uh, spend that time on day-to-day uh, -day activities as we used to or we can be shift uh, you know we may have to relocate to another city uh, for some time and so on so it need not always be a negative connotation like death so there can be other uh, positive developments that can happen also where we become too busy so in that situation we must create some kind of a framework for the um, so far, uh, not interested partner to, you know, uh, to quickly uh, get on board and uh, get on with uh, uh, everyday activities. So this is what I would suggest. First thing is they should know or better still, they should decide where to keep the bank passbooks, health and life insurance policies, health insurance cards, all other relevant IDs, paperwork, forms, applications, everything that we will need from time to time uh electricity bills uh, uh you know property certificates everything where where they should where they are in the house they should know it's better if they decide then we will also know where it is they will also know where it is we will also know where it is and we should always ensure there is cash in the bank uh for a few months um in a one or two bank accounts and they should have access to the to these via atm because some of them may not have uh, experience going to the bank and uh, you know getting money they may just not be exp they may not they may they may I mean they may be literate but they would have never done it enough in the in their lives to to be comfortable about it and if they use it for shopping then they would know the pin automatically so it's not a problem and the most important step is uh, you should find some family member or a friend or better still a semi registered fee only financial planner who will take care of uh, you know essentials in our absence and that family friend or uh, or relative should be a person whose investment philosophy matches with ours otherwise some uncle will step in and say all oh, this is wrong your husband has done everything wrong your wife has done everything wrong i will show you how to do it and they will mess up everything uh, that we have done uh, so far. So this is extremely important. The, the SEBI registered fee only financial planner. I have a list uh, to, to locate the list. What you should do is go to freefincal.com and it's on the footer. If you just go to the bottom of the page, you will see that list. And uh, uh, close to, I would say close to about 1000 readers or, uh, or maybe slightly more than that are working with these fee only financial advisors for the past uh, six years now. So, uh, also when we invest or save in something, it is better to make the uh, um, the spouse as the second holder. Don't make them nominee because then if the if in case of transmission of units upon our death, then it will be easier for them if they are the second holder instead of the nominee. Also, we get these monthly statements from CAMS or NSDL or whatever that has all our stock, mutual fund, bond holdings. Uh, we get it in our email address so we can set up an automatic forward to their email address explain to them what this is they don't need to know all the details uh, 
explain to them what this is and also you can auto archive it because they will get irritated if they get it monthly they may delete it which is in a in a uh, uh, in a place like gmail this is very easy to auto archive such emails just put it in an archive so your financial advisor if they can get access to this they can quickly without asking any for uh, keep uh, asking questions to your partner they can quickly find out where you have invested and uh, you know pro offer proper guidance in our absence and obviously we should have a, sh a text document or a spreadsheet where we have full details of every investment plan goals asset allocation everything people ask for a template for this there's no need for a template just write it one hard copy one electronic copy uh, where they are shared for example in google docs you can make them as uh, you know an editor or something like that you can do it so easily online microsoft also has uh, office also has this option now we can do that so also we should have a don't do a uh, list of don'ts that is don't talk to a, a bank a relationship manager don't talk to a sales guy without consulting the friend or financial advisor all sort of do don't do certain things that you must also make sure also obviously you should have a will and they should know where the will is will in certain cases what you can do is uh, for, i mean i would say will is not always necessary or you can have a will and you can make it open that is you at the time of writing itself you disclose uh, the will for example you can say i have one crore and i have two children i'm going to leave one third of that one crore to my wife one third of one crore to my son one third of that one crore to my daughter I, then i can open three bank accounts so in one bank account my wife will be second holder the other my son and the other my daughter so this way what happens is uh, after my death they they will immediately they will automatically and immediately get the money there's no need for going through nomination uh, they will ask for legal heir certificate there's no you just need to offer the death certificate if you show the death certificate the bank will bank will circle out the first holder uh, uh, name and the automatically the second holder will become the first holder v without any legalities without the the need for you know making a will uh, without the need for you know uh, you know following instructions on the will we can already uh, set this in motion automatically uh, so easily with some planning and as regards online passwords I have a, a LastPass. Uh, I'm a paid subscriber in LastPass, so LastPass has got a master password. So what I do is I have asked my wife to set the master password, so she will know how to open LastPass because uh, she has set it and she remembers it. I whenever I open, uh, I ask her if she remembers. So she remembers it. She will open. She will get access to all my important uh, bank account passwords, mutual fund, demand, demand account, all that. utility bills what i have done is i have uh, stored in lastpass as well as uh, in google chrome so eb bill bsnl bill whatever or telephone whatever every all those things can be easily uh, done via um, uh, auto auto filled via chrome and so on so uh, there is a very simple way to do it also in your uh, i mean if they have basic uh, if they are basically have some if they understand basic english they can find out how to you know reset a password but they should know the email they should know the mobile number we have given and so on that also information should be given in the document so that will be a uh, that will be useful to uh, uh, put that so um, i mean you have to decide on what what to, to do in my in my wife's case she will be able to quickly uh, you know get on, get online and work she just doesn't want to do it so uh, some i mean in my in my case what i do is i have a feature phone my primary phone is only the feature phone i i do have a smartphone but that smartphone i use only for audio books and for seo and so on uh, i don't what i do in seo that's uh, don't ask me what i do uh, i can't reveal that um so i i don't believe in transactions uh, done on a smartphone in fact doing a transaction on a smartphone getting the otp in the same device beats the whole point of two factor authentic authentication two factor authentication works on, in my opinion only when it is in a different device so that's why all my uh, transactions are done in the featured phone and uh, she knows those basics so that kind of basic online security also is very important otherwise uh, uh, i mean many of many of you may disagree with me but some whatever you believe is online security should also be in that document so that's about it the rest is uh, up to them i mean we can only create a system for them to get quickly get some money get access to basic passwords understand where our investments are understand what our plan is other than that well we can't worry too much about it.